Hey everyone, this is at Vanessa Joy here on Instagram for Adorama. And today we are working with a gorgeous model, Lauren Casarona. You can find her on Instagram. Lauren Casarona is just yeah, so simple. simple. <laughs> We're doing some cute fall portraits all natural light, but I'm going to be showing you some of the things to look out for when you're shooting natural light. Uh, even in a great daylight studio like this, you kind of look around and you think there's all this white, it's going to be easy, it's going to be perfect, but there's some little hiccups that might happen, and I know I encounter this at weddings that we're going to overcome today. So, first things first, I love where she is. We are blocking out some of the light here with these curtains, but I think we'll play a little bit. But I have her started here as our first sort of pitfall that I see happen a lot. Now, she's in shade. She doesn't have any direct light hitting her. But let's go ahead and take a picture. I'm going to have you just crouch down real quick like this and take a shot. By the way, I am shooting with the Canon EOS R6. And I have the 135mm 2.0 on at the moment. I think I'll switch at some point to the 2870 2.0. I'm actually all set for an engagement session later, so this is what I actually <laughs> shoot with. Definitely decided on this camera over the R5 just so that I uh, have a little bit less weight to carry around the city. All right, let's go all the way down to 100. And I'm at F4. I think I just want to play around F2. And I'm at 320th of a second. So right where she crouched down, this is kind of pitfall number one. You have to just be careful that you're keeping consistent light on her face as well as the background. If you're going for that smooth, light and airy look. So what I'm going to have you do is just scooch back a tiny little bit till she goes into that shade. Good. And then you can just kind of sit right there. So off the bat, you think this looks okay, right? But watch what happens when I take a picture and you're like nervous. You're like, wait, why are you putting me in not good places? Nice. Turn your head a little bit more this way. Good. Right there. And then eyes back to me. Nice. All right. What I want to show you, you can relax whether that's sit or stand. <laughs> what I want to show you on here is something that happens very often and it's not super horrible when you have white floors but it is definitely a problem when you are in a room that has wood floors or you know any other color but white really if you look at her under her cheekbones are actually lit and the top of her cheekbones are shadowed which is kind of giving her circles underneath her eyes and then lighting really the under eyes. It's really, really unflattering. And what's happening here is if you look at this big, bright spot on the floor, this is a huge problem. Often I'll photograph brides and I'll have them go by the window and I'll be photographing them by the window and I don't understand why it looks like they're 20 years older than they are. And usually it's because there's some kind of hot spot that's not on their face, it's on the floor. So something you can do to deal with this, this is actually why I wanted to be flat. <laughs> You can just take a black piece of fabric. Maybe if you're using a reflector that has a five in one or an eight in one, you could use the black side. And you can go ahead and just cover it. And you're gonna see a different type of light pattern on her face that's not gonna make it look like she's got under eye circles going on. I'm so sorry I had to photograph you that way first. <laughs> like this is how we start. I haven't seen you in forever. There we go. Let me do so one more. <laughs> Lauren and I go way back. Okay, so let me just show you the difference side by side. So zoomed in a bit just so you can see what's going on. So see the under, uh, under cheek is lit, not as flattering as opposed to now when, now I can really actually see a nice side angle. Underneath her cheekbones are now shadowed and it's just giving her a more flattering look that's not having that like scary flashlight underneath telling the ghost story at a campfire. All right. Now that I'm done with that, let's go ahead and have some fun and pose her. I'm gonna leave that right there. You're gonna stand up. I'm gonna have you go over to the radiator there. Is it radiator? Do you say radiator or radiator? I say radiator. Radiator? Radiator? I feel like it's very Philly radiator. It is. Maybe it's not. Radiator? <laughs> Sounds like something South Jersey. <laughs> Which is maybe where I'm confused since I'm right in the middle. All right, so we switched over to the 20 to 72.0. And now we're going to get into some posing. So since we're in a nice daylight studio, there's not a ton of, you know, direction on the light. She's got a little bit more light coming from the window side. We could fill the other side if we wanted to. I think I'll leave it as is. 
But this is where posing is gonna come into play more than anything else because you're not shaping as much with light, you have to shape with the body. So Lauren's looking super cute right now. So let's just take a photo here. And usually I do shoot with this up to my eye, but you know, for your sake, I tend to like you to be able to see. And she looks super cute right now. But since we're doing fall, we have her with a nice chunky sweater on and having her just sit isn't doing her any favors. So we're gonna switch that up. So first thing you wanna do, come as close as you can off of the radiator and you wanna sit on one hip or the other. So whenever you're seated, you don't wanna be on both butt cheeks. <laughs> you wanna pick one side or the other. Uh, can I be annoying and make it the other side? Cause the other side you have a cute little slit. Yep. Yeah, so I want to show off more of the skirt and more of, you know, what makes it unique. So super cute, and I love how you positioned your legs. So her legs are nice and asymmetrical. One of the things that makes posing look really stiff when you have somebody that doesn't pose so well is they try to make everything symmetrical, and no one is like that in real life. We're always tilted to one side or the other side, so I love that you did that automatically. Now we want to make sure the rest of her doesn't look like a big black sweater blob <laughs> which is hard to do when you ha i told her to wear like a nice chunky sweater because i knew we would want to overcome this little pitfall so one of the things i'll have you do kind of like wrap yourself up like you're nice and cozy reason i'm doing this is instantly you can see on the left side now she has more waist so i'm going to have you exaggerate it bring your arm a little bit over maybe a little bit back right there nice and then love the playing with the hair and you can see both sides have just cinched in. So go back to where you were before. Actually, I'll have them look at it here, just like that. And then go ahead and wrap that arm around, bring one up. Beautiful. So right away, look at this. From here to here, whoops. It's like we put you on keto. <laughs> just miracles right away. All right, there's one more thing I would like to see. Do me a favor, go like this again. Um, you know what, do it with the other side and come underneath your sleeve and kind of bring it in, yeah, and then with this hand. Maybe not. What I was trying to do is see if I could actually see, let me see if I could see your hand. Yes, yeah. there we go. So being able to see her hand more, and then try the other way, because actually I do think I liked, yeah, being able to see her hand just breaks it up. So you're trying to find ways to break it up. So go ahead and grab, and this might be like the silliest thing, but I love like turtlenecks and grabbing yeah. and cuddling in them. Yeah. Yes, very full. Love that. Nice. Give your head a little tilt this way. Nice, chin down a little bit. Stay right there, but look right about here. Beautiful. And chin down a whole bunch, like you're cuddling up in cold. Nice. And maybe bring one of your legs almost up. Yes. That's so cute. Beautiful. And look back at me again. And the shoulder that's towards me, drop it all the way down. I actually like what you did though, so do that too. Bring it all the way up. Nice. Love it. Okay, like where'd you go? <laughs> so here's what we have so far. This is looking cute, but we want to bring a little bit more, a little bit more into it. Head tilts are big with me, so if you notice when her head is tilted this way, it almost has a little bit more vulnerable look. But as opposed to this way, it's almost a little bit more powerful. There's a lot of subtleties in body language and how you choose to pose someone. And for what I'm going for here is something a little bit more vulnerable. So what I think I'm gonna have you do, actually turn this way and then come all the way to the wall, because I'm gonna have you end up leaning on the wall a little bit. Yes, yeah. I wonder if we might play with that. So what I want to do with her is I'm going to have you lean this way. And I tend to do this with my clients all the time. I do mirroring with them because it's very difficult to explain what to do versus just showing someone. So you kind of lean this way just with your shoulders and then bring both your arms up. So if I want her to seem like dainty and vulnerable and sweet, I'm going to bring her hands in a little bit cuddly. And then I like kind of more towards this shoulder. Yep. And just play with your a uh, turtleneck, turtleneck or your hair, love it. And then tilt your head all the way this way, perfect. And then put your head all the way to the wall and look down that direction, that looks gorgeous. And the hand that has your hair on it, just kind of play and bring your wrist back a little bit this way, nice. And then look towards me, perfect. 
Bring your hands kind of resting here. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe try down. Yes, like that. And then kind of just hold onto your sweater. Wonderful. And drop that shoulder down a little. There you go. Now I can see more of your face. Beautiful. Love it. And then look all the way out this window. And then eyes down. And just keep moving your fingers around. So Lauren is obviously a model because she's gorgeous and does everything herself. But when you're working with non-models, it's really easy for them to do these kind of claw grips. So what I tell people to do typically is either just move your fingers around like you're um, impatient. You know how you like impatiently do this when you're just tapping your fingers at a desk? So just pretend you're doing that and just do it really slowly. Or you can have them just take their middle fingers and then just gracefully kind of trace body parts. So either one. <laughs> Love it. Perfect. And then look out that way. Can you bring a knee up? Maybe the one that's closest to me? Uh, yes, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just give a little bit more shape right there. Pretty. And then look at me, kind of smirk. Beautiful. Nice. Just a little bit. So we're photographing more her face, and I think I'm gonna get a nice close up. Let me just show you the difference when I had her cross her knees. So before, there's just kind of nothing going on here. But since I have most of her body, I'm gonna give her a little bit more leg. Nice. All right, I'm just gonna switch. I wanna get a couple of you right here with the 135, nice close ups on her face. Turn off the camera. That is a rule with mirrorless. I usually swap hot, but. Um, you know, DSLRs give that little added protection of the sensor and the shutter. That mirrorless does not, unless you're turned off, then at least the shutter comes down. So, gotta teach this old dog new tricks. <laughs> I gotta learn how to turn my camera off and not hot swap. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do the exact same thing. We just got a nice lens, close up lens on. Good. Turn your head a little bit more this way. Just want a little bit more light in her eyes. Move those fingers around, love that. And smirk. Beautiful. Now something you wanna teach uh, people that you photograph is whenever they hear the sound of the shutter, they move. And I'm surprised you can even hear <laughs> the shutter because this uh, camera is so, so quiet. But I purposely keep mechanical shutter on, love that one mechanical shutter on so that my clients can hear me taking a photo. Because if they don't hear me taking a photo, then they don't know when to move. So very important. Little things, right? Uh, and it is really quiet, so I'm glad you can hear it. <laughs> All right, what I'd like to do right now is I wanna do a shot where we're actually shooting into the window. I get a lot of questions about this. I am gonna switch back to the other lens. It was a short-lived moment. But I get a lot of questions about you know shooting in and making it backlit and you know making sure it's exposed correctly but obviously white out behind her it seems simple but when you go to do this there are a lot of pitfalls that you end up you know running into so let's go ahead and do that so you can stand up and hopefully that hasn't hurt you so much yeah, not the most comfortable thing in the world okay so first thing that we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna choose the correct window so this has a big part in whether or not this is going to work. So right away, if you stand right here, let me see the light on you. That looks okay, but you can't have, see the highlight on the top of her head? You can't have it that strong because then that will blow up, blow out, and it'll end up wrapping more around her. So you actually have to bring her away from the wall a little bit. So one, two, that is actually really good. I think we'll go there. You know what? No, I think we'll go to this one. Let me see. Yes, all right, so what I'm looking for when I'm choosing which wall is the background. And this one is blown out for me a little bit already, so it's gonna help me out, but it's not overpowering her. Now, if you're working with a mirrorless camera or a DSLR or any camera that does a good job looking at live view and seeing your exposure simulation, that'll help you out. So right away, looking at her, I look at her, but I'm more looking at the background. I want to blow out my background, so I'm gonna see how low I have to go on my shutter speed, because I'm at ISO 100 f2.0. 
how low I have to go to achieve that. And it looks okay now, but go ahead and take one more step towards me. But as she steps towards me, one more, right there. Now there's less of the glare happening around her and there's a better exposure on her face while the background is still overexposed. So that's what you're trying to do. You just have to find that spot where it works to blow out the background, but not her face. The other thing that's helpful is if you have lenses that help with the, the glow, the flare that cuts down on that flare, there's I can't remember the name of the coating, A-sphere coating, that's what it is. If it has an A-sphere coating on it, you're going to have a better job not getting it to be hazy and it'll still be crisp. The last thing you could do is throw a reflector in front of her, uh, which since there's one right here, can I use this? Okay. Everyone say hi to Seth, this is his studio. Okay, so this is, um, the Halo Compact Reflector, although this is actually both a diffuser and a reflector. You can use it for both purposes. We will be using it as a reflector, and you know what's happening. Look at her face right now. Do you see how she's getting her cheekbones lit up underneath? That's because we have this white here, so I'm going to cover the floor again. There we go. Solve that problem. Um, let's see. Do you have one? You have a Brooklyn reflector. Oh man, is this the first time I'm publicly using this? So Brooklyn reflector, first of all, how many in the chat know what a Brooklyn reflector is and you know what he's about to pull out? There it is. <laughs> Thanks. So a Brooklyn reflector is basically anything that you can pull out of the no, no, a Brooklyn trash. reflector is a pizza box usually this is a or trash of any <laughs> kind that you've put <laughs> aluminum foil on. <laughs> uh, I should feel very special. Anyway, this one has foam, it's foam core, so you've got white on one side and silver on the other. So let's just play with the difference. So you're staying right where you are. Uh, I am going to change my settings a little bit so that I can handhold this a little bit better. So I went up to 400 on my ISO and 400 on my shutter because I'm going to handhold this while I hold this. Uh, and this lens is a beast. So let's, let's shoot around 50 millimeters. Nice. Now to do this, we have to think about the same things. So go a little bit this way, maybe wrap one hand around here. Maybe I should just hold on to the bottom of your shirt. Yeah, there we go. As long as we break the black, I think we'll do a good job. All right, I'm actually pretty happy with how this is. Yeah, I think we do need silver. All right, we'll do that. Chin down a little bit. Nice, you know what would be fun? Bring both of your hands up this way. Yes, and flip your hair a little bit. Yeah, right there. So I'm just gonna do no reflector. Hold on. No reflector first, and we'll do white. Beautiful, then we'll do silver, and I won't hit you in the face. <laughs> nice, let me just show them what it looks like between those three. No reflector here. There you go. And you can see it's blowing out. Not too bad, blowing out of hair a little bit. That's with the white reflector. And then this is silver. So I think silver is our answer here. It's just giving the most pop in her eyes. All right, let's do a couple more. I love just at least one hand up, maybe coming back this way. And maybe we'll play. It's all about playing. Yeah, that looks good. I'm also gonna be up a little bit more. <laughs> you know, we're gonna use the long side since I'm all the way back here. That looks great. Nice. Perfect. Turn a little this way. Nice. And you can then turn your whole body and look at me over your shoulder a little bit. Beautiful. The only thing is I can't move too much, so I'll stay here. Nice. Come down a little bit with your shoulder. Yeah, right here. Nice. And then look over your shoulder down that way. and then go ahead and look at me. Love that. Perfect. 
and then turn all the way towards me again. Let me zoom in all the way and then there we go. Love that. Bring that one hand back a little bit more. So still play with your hair, but don't show me the palm side. Okay. Come underneath a little bit. Yes, great. And even back a little bit more. Beautiful. And then kind of go under your hair with your hands, like mess it up a little bit because we're almost done, might as well. <laughs> this is the 28 to 70 2.0. Take a look. So come back a little bit more with your hair. So bring it all in front and then kind of take your, I almost don't want to see a lot of your hands, but take it this way. Maybe take that. Yeah, and then not so much on your cheek, bring it behind. Yes, that, that's perfect. Yeah, elbows down a little bit. Love it. Keep your left hand exactly where it is and the right hand can come down a whole bunch. Actually just drop the, yes, perfect. Tilt that way a little and then drop both hands. Nice. Love it. Tilt your head this way towards the light a little. Perfect. And then give me a smirk. <laughs> Love it. Okay. It's so much fun shooting into a white background like that. It just gives you such a nice clean image that you wanna make sure to just control it a little bit. Now if we were shooting flash, it'd probably have a little bit more light on her face, but since we're going with natural light, I'm pretty happy with this. And nothing is you know, blowing her out too much because it's important, let's just say with photos like this, you don't want it to completely take away her hair there. Because if I was a little bit more overexposed, that would be almost like cutting her hair in half. And this right here, this is when I asked her to move her hand because you don't want to see the palm of her hand like this. It's much nicer to see the side of it like that. Love these. And there are little parts. You can see when it blinks like this, little blinkies tell you where you're 100% white. So there are little parts of it that aren't, but again, for natural light, this is good. How to make a white background when shooting with natural light only. <laughs> anyway, so I hope that's been helpful. We had fun shooting a little fall session here. And uh, definitely check out the R6 on Adorama.com. Currently, they have a really good trading program happening right now. So if you head to Adorama.com, click on trade, you can send in your old gear to get some new toys. I'm at Vanessa Joy here on Instagram. This is at Lauren Casarona, C A S A R O N A, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. And the Brooklyn